Right, so what you saw there was my new fire piston, a very short version of a fire piston. I believe it might have actually beaten records on the shortest working fire piston. This one here um, I made the other day and I'm going to show you how to make this um, cylindrical part for the fire piston. It's critical that you get every dimension right on a fire piston for them to work. And you need a mirror finish in the bore in this um, uh, cylindrical part. I've shown how to make this part before, the actual piston with the grooves for the O-rings and bored at the front there on the longer version that I showed. And I've also shown how to inlay coins like this Indian head coin from the USA. Very nice coin, it looks excellent in items like this. To make the um, O-ring grooves, or to do the O-ring grooves, I use these tools here, which I get from Banggood. It's the MGEHR 1010 1.5, so it's 1.5 millimeter thick groove tool, which is ideal for the size of O-rings I use. And I also use these for parting off, so I'll put a link below for those. Very good tool. To get the mirror finish in the bore, I drill, then I use a flat bottom drill, and that leaves about seven or eight thou on the diameter. And then I use a very long boring bar, which I got off of Banggood in a set. And I modified this one, just ground off the back here a bit, and the underside so it could actually get into this small hole. And that one will produce a mirror finish for that piston. So if you get into making these survival tools, um, these fire pistons, sometimes known as uh, fire syringes, um, it is actually best to make the piston part first with the O-rings um, seated to the uh, correct depth so that there's going to be enough O-ring squeeze on the bore. And then you can uh, put a piece of aluminium up and drill it and bore it, like I said and keep checking with the actual piston until you get the right feel to the squeeze of the o-rings on that bore for them to work and that's the quickest and easiest way of making them if you're new to fire pistons the substance that you put in the end is either char cloth or amadou fungus which you can actually buy on ebay so now I'll go out into the workshop and show you the quick operations to actually make this one. Right, so the first thing I want to do is part off a piece of aluminium just over 50mm long with that 1.5mm wide groove tool. And I use a bit of paraffin on that one.
Just a couple of thou more. And you can see there that I was using the power feed for all those cuts to get a really good finish. And that's excellent. And now I turn around and face off the other end. and put some decorative grooves on it. Deep out the corner. And then I use a straight nail. a bit deeper. And that's the job done. So this is the one I've just finished and I'll give it a go. And there we go, first time. They're an excellent little project because you have to be so precise on the dimensions to get them working, like I said before. And it actually um, gives you good lessons in machining and getting good finishes. 
And just one thing I didn't mention um, when I did the machining, you saw me doing um, D bearing on the front of the bore here. Well, I put a nice large radius on that one, and that uh, prevents damage of the O rings when you put the piston into the bore. If you don't have a nice um, radius or chamfer there, um, you'll actually shear some rubber off of the um, O rings and ruin them. So that's why you need a nice, large, smooth radius even before um, you finish it so that you're checking and it won't actually damage those O-rings.